there are specific atomic transition frequencies that you can calculate and measure very precisely. Clocks are everywhere. As we saw in the previous videos, anything that repeats over time can be turned into a clock. Traditionally, pendulums have been the most popular ingredient for building clocks. However, dirt, wind, vibrations and so on prevent pendulums from being perfect clocks. Which periodic phenomenon can we use to make a clock as accurate as possible? The answer is, we use the frequency of light waves. But how do we create light waves of a very precise frequency? So, the gentle principle of atomic clocks is that you take an external source, say like a laser source, and you measure the frequency which is in resonance with that of the atom's transition frequency. And there are specific atomic transition frequencies that you can calculate and measure very precisely. So what we essentially do is that we take an ensemble of atoms and then we build a device which generates an oscillatory signal. And this oscillatory signal is in resonance with that of the atom's natural oscillations. So in order to build a clock then you just measure or count the number of cycles of this oscillatory signal that you get out. So atoms emit light of a very precise frequency, which we can use to build a clock. The first clocks based on this principle used cesium atoms and were invented in the 1950s. They would only go wrong by one second in a hundred thousand years. Uh, as we progress, we are trying to make the atomic clocks more and more precise. For this, we are using strontium atoms in our lab, but why strontium? Strontium's natural internal electronic structure make them natural candidates for the atomic clocks. Uh, this is because that the, the transitions that they have are very narrow and they are also very less sensitive to the external disturbances, say like the electric and magnetic fields that you usually have in the labs. The atoms that we have, they can keep moving and this will make the laser difficult for it to interact with the same atoms. And the atoms themselves can interact with each other and this will change the behavior of the whole ensemble. So in order to overcome this, we have to slow these atoms down and cool them. And these atoms are in gaseous state and we cool them and trap them in the low thermal energies. And we do this by advanced laser uh, cooling and trapping techniques. And we employ this and we actually cool down all these atoms to in the ranges of uh, micro Kelvin. As we saw in video three of this series, for many applications, we need extremely precise clocks. To make tiny atoms behave in such a way that they will tell us time that precisely, however, we need enormous and delicate equipment. Here you could see this is our test bed setup just to examine the industrial components as well as to build our own optical atomic clock. In this part you could see this is the atomic oven where the solid strontium pieces get heated up and just to generate the atomic beam. And then, to efficiently trap the atoms, we will need the Siemens lower to slow them down. And the next part, when the atoms travel to the center of the MOS chamber, they would need to be cooled and trapped. This is done by magneto-optical trap, which is also called MOT. It consists of a combination of laser beams in three orthogonal directions, as well as a spatially varying magnetic field gradient. And here we have some cubical coils to make an enclosure just to make sure that we cancel out the Earth's magnetic field at the center of the science chamber. Last but not least, these atoms are trapped by optical lattice just to make sure they have increased lifetime for some clock measurements. One problem remains. How do we make these enormous and delicate machines transportable so that they can be used in practice, in navigation, communication or industry? A fully functional optical clock might take the space in the entire lab. That's why here at the University of Birmingham, we're not only trying to make the clocks more precise, but also more transportable as well as suitable for end-user requirements. But not only do we have to make the clocks smaller and smaller, in the next video, we will see that for ultra-precise clocks, the wavelength of the light we use also needs to be very small.
This will bring us to the final technical cornerstone of the IQ Clock project, the optical atomic clock.